in the last part we have seen how dislocation reactions takes place and how they form logs we call them as lomer water logs now we are talking about crystal structures and dislocations let me introduce super lattice dislocations which we find in intermetallic compounds so this intermetallic compounds are nothing but ordered solid solutions and they sometimes called as stoichiometric compounds why they are called stoichiometric compounds because they form at certain compositions of elements so when i talk about super lattice what do i exactly mean i am talking about a long range order so there are two types of order one is short range order and one is long range order so when i talk about super lattice or ordered solid solution i am always talking about a long range order now let's look at certain examples of intermetallic compounds so let's look at this example of ni3al so where aluminum is at the corners and nickel occupies the face centers as you know that nickel and aluminum both have abscess structure but if you look at this ni3l structure it is not an abscess structure it is called as l12 structure and it is different from abscess structure so you have this intermetallic compound forming at certain compositions of nickel and aluminum and thus these are called as stoichiometric compounds so you need three atoms of nickel and one atom of aluminum to form this crystal structure which is ni3a now let's look at another intermetallic compound nial where aluminum occupies the corners and nickel occupies the body center so here nickel is 50 atomic percent aluminum is 50 atomic percent and this kind of structure forms at certain stoichiometric compounds and this is nial structure which is called as p2 structure now you know that nickel and aluminum is also abscess here but the structure which is formed looks like a bcc structure but it is not a bcc structure it is a b2 structure and this kind of designations are called as struct where designations and you can look for this designations in certain books of crystallography and you can understand what is the meaning of b what is the meaning of 2 or what is the meaning of l what is the meaning of 1 and this subscript 2 so these are called as struct varied designations and why this stoichiometric compounds form so if you look at thermodynamics the bond energy of eab that is energy of the unlike pair of atoms let's say if i have binary ab so it bond energy between a and b is less than that of less than that of half of summation of bond energies of like pair of atoms that is eaa plus ebb so when this eab is less than half of eaa plus ebb we tend to get ordered solid solution or intermetallic compounds now let's look at dislocations in this kind of intermetallic or ordered solid solution now i have shown some ordered solid solution here and let's when you want to find out a dislocation what we do is we make glide of one atomic layer over another atomic layer and try to see how the structure changes so here in this case the tra lattice translation is from let me mark it here so that is translation is from this point to this point and let's move the top crystal over here on the bottom crystal now when it moves by one unit you can say that the like atoms are above each other here you can say that red is falling over red atom black is falling over black atom so when i move by just one unit you can say that there is a creation of a fault which we have seen in case of abscess structure that there is a creation of fault when i when we glide some atom layers over another atom layer and now if i move by one more unit what you get is i have restored the structure and let's look at these two scenarios now to understand what is happening so in first case when i moved by just one unit so i call it as one unit dislocation so we form a like bonds over each other at this region at this boundary and this boundary is called as antiphase boundary 
because in case of intermetallics we know that the unlike atom bonding will be taking place rather over like bondings so let me write it down so ab ab bonding will be preferred over aa or bb bonding so here in this case if you look at we have aa and bb bonding which is happening over here so this kind of region is called as antiphase boundary and you can see clearly that this is a 2d defect or a surface defect so this is analogous to stacking fault in case of fcc so this antiphase boundary forms in case of ordered solid solutions and which is a surface defect or a 2d defect now let's look at another scenario where we move again this top crystal or a bottom crystal by one more unit and you can say that this retains or regains the original structure or removes this antiphase boundary or this defect and this is called as when i move this by this displacement this is called as super dislocation now when i call this as super dislocation i call this as a partial dislocation so if we want to retain this crystal structure or this ordered structure what we need is that this dislocation has to move in pairs so i have one more one displacement over here and still i need one more displacement to retain the ordered structure and thus the dislocation has to move in pairs to retain this ordered structure and this dislocation is called as super dislocation now let's look at antiphase boundary and this super dislocation in more detail so here we have shown a, an ordered structure and here you can see these are antiphase boundaries you can see that here we have like pair of atoms which are forming and thus these are antiphase boundaries similarly here you have like pair of atoms and these are antiphase boundaries here also and here also however in this this case is called as antiphase domain while here in this case if you look at this or this scenario closely let me mark it here so you have kind of a half planes which are here and thus they can be considered as a dislocations so you have two like dislocations which are here and in between you have this antiphase boundary similarly you have one positive and one negative edge dislocation and in between them there is an antiphase boundary here also if there is a dislocation present you can say there is a presence of antiphase boundaries so what you can say that you have this super dislocation when it splits into two dislocations it contains an antiphase boundary so if this antiphase boundary has to move what has to happen if these two dislocations should annihilate each other or this dislocation completely swipe over this region to remove this antiphase boundary so we can say that when i have a super dislocation which splits into two partial dislocations it contains an antiphase boundaries similar this is similar to stacking fault formation in case of fcc so we have seen a dislocation dissociation to two partials and creates a stacking fault similarly in case of super lattice or ordered compounds when this super lattice dislocation dissociates into two partial dislocation it forms an antiphase boundary and this partial dislocation can again split into super partials to form super intrinsic stacking fault let's mark that here so we have super dislocation in an ordered solid solution it forms two normal dislocations like this which are called as super partials and in between it comprises of antiphase boundary and this super partials can split into partial dislocations and this partials will comprise of stacking fault and that we call it as super intrinsic stacking fault 
So this is how the dissociation of dislocation takes place in case of ordered solid solution. Now what is an extent of this dis dissociation? So that can be found, found that we can find it out using the equilibrium separation of these two dislocations and that will depend on the balance between antiphase boundary energy and the repulsive forces between dislocations. So similar approach we have used to find out equilibrium separation distance between two partials when we talked about stacking fault energy. In case of finding out what is the extent of dislocation or dissociation, we can say that the equilibrium separation of this two dislocation depends on the balance between these two energies. So antiphase boundary energy creates a fault and is associated with some energy with it. So it will try to reduce this energy and thus try to attract this dislocation together while there will be a repulsive force between these two dislocations which will try to move away this dislocation away from each other. And thus the balance between these two will give us the equilibrium separation of these two dislocations and that we can find out using r equal to c upon sigma where c is a constant and sigma is surface tension of antiphase boundary and this is nothing but number of wrong bonds cutting the boundary. So if we have antiphase boundary and you find out what are the number of wrong bonds cutting to it which quantifies the surface tension of this antiphase boundary and you can clearly see that if sigma is high this r is small and sigma is low the r will be large. So you can say that when sigma is high r is small so that means this super partials will not be away from each other rather they will try to be close to each other and there will not be any dissociation. While in case of low sigma, the R will be large and these dislocations can move freely also. There will be a quite separation between these two dislocations. And when this super dislocation split into two super partials, it results into strain hardening because now these two dislocations has to move together in a pair so as to not to create more antiphase boundary and thus not to increase the energy of the system. So that results in the strain hardening and this kind of structures will always result in increase in strain and decrease in ductility. With this I will stop here by briefly introducing what are super dislocations in these super lattices or intermetallic compounds.